Moving on with the thermal voltage in an RC, uh, thermal noise in an RC system, thermal voltage, same thing. Uh, this this expression that we had for the the vol thermal noise, the noise voltage. A lot of that is pretty intuitive to me. I think it would be intuitive to a lot of you, except for this delta F. What does this delta F mean? Well, it's a bandwidth over which you're sampling the noise, and that's a confusing concept. So let me go into that a little bit. I'm going to scroll down for that. Let me rewrite the expression for the noise voltage. This is RMS noise voltage equals 4KTR delta F. Okay, there we go. All right. Say we wanted to know, know the noise uh, on a resistor between two frequencies. I'm going to give some examples here. Frequency 1, frequency 2, and delta F. Let's say frequency 1 is 0 hertz DC and frequency 2 is 1 hertz. Uh, what's delta F? It's just 1 hertz. 1 minus 0. What if frequency 1 was 1009 hertz and frequency 2 was 1010 hertz? What's delta F? Well, it's still just 1 hertz. Uh, it's 1010 minus 1009. What if we wanted to look between frequency 1, 0 hertz, and frequency 2 of 1 gigahertz? Well, now our delta F is 1 gigahertz. Okay. 1 gigahertz minus 0. Hopefully that's clear. Um, this is very useful uh, because you need to, to keep this in mind when you're trying to limit the noise in a system. What's your, what bandwidth are you concerned with? And let me draw out what I, what I mean by this. Let's say we had, here's an ideal ground, perfect ground, come up, down here, here's the resistor, which is not perfect, it's, uh, well, it's a resistor, so there's going to be some thermal noise across it, and then we have a capacitor which we said before was noiseless. There's C. No thermal no, no there's no heat dissipation in the capacitor so there's no no thermal noise associated with it. If we were to well let's 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 redefine VN. It's completely arbitrary. We can define it another way. So we'll define the positive terminal here VN minus there. What do we have here uh, if we were to look at this node? Uh, we have indeed a low pass filter. You typically draw a low pass filter as some VN uh, shunt capacitor and then some resistor and uh, there's V out. So convince yourself that this is the same thing, but it is. What is the time constant of this low pass filter? Well, the time constant tau is RC seconds. Okay. What is the 3 dB frequency, the cutoff of this uh, R, this uh, low pass filter? Well, the 3 dB cutoff is going to be 1 over RC, which is in units of hertz, and we're going to say that's our delta F. Above a certain frequency, we're not going to see any of the voltage any of the noise components, they get shunted to ground, and below that frequency we see them. Let me scroll down a minute. Having a little trouble. Let's clear out a little space. Well, what this delta F, let's plug it into our expression for voltage noise. Let me rewrite that. Voltage noise equals 4KTR delta F which equals, oh, I forgot the 4, which equals 4 KTR. Now our delta F is 1 over RC. What does this come out to be? Well, the noise voltage is 4 KT over C. That is an interesting expression because our noise voltage was caused by the resistor 
the thermal noise on the resistor. But in the final expression for noise voltage, here, we have the resistor showing up not at all. It's dominated, in fact, by the capacitor. And why is that? That's because the capacitor is what's setting the bandwidth of the system. I think this is a very interesting result. The resistor, let me just say it again because I think it's so interesting. The resistor is the source of the thermal noise, but it doesn't show up in this, in this expression. The capacitor uh, is what determines the bandwidth of the system. So uh, what, what can we say about this? Well, what if the resistor went up? That would mean R delta F would go down proportionally, and we would have the same bandwidth. What if we decrease the value of our resistor? What that would mean is our delta F, our bandwidth, goes up. Now we would have the same bandwidth. The, effectively, the system is independent of the resistance, uh, even though that's the source of, of the noise. And I think that's just a very interesting result. Let me scroll down some more. And I'm going to start talking about this expression here. Noise voltage. What can we say about this expression in general? Well, we can say that as T goes down, if we cool down the system, the noise voltage goes down. That's what we expect because at root, the 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 source of the the noise is a thermally driven effect. Also, if we increase the value of the capacitance, the noise voltage goes down. And that's because we're decreasing the bandwidth of the system. So you could look at this expression and say, well, I want my noise voltage to be as small as possible, and I, maybe I don't have control over the temperature. Why don't I just make the capacitor as large as possible? A large capacitor. Large capacitor. Wouldn't that give me a very low noise voltage? Well, indeed, it would, but there's a trade-off, because if you do that, the, the time constant of your system uh, will, will um, increase. And that's going to cause it to behave and respond very slowly to intentional signals. So there's going to be one effect here of low Vn, but the side effect is going to be a slow response to intentional signals, to signals you want to see. Intentional. So there's a trade-off there. Let me have a side discussion here. You'll often see noise spec in terms of, let me scroll down. It's related, but a little different. You'll often see noise spec for a system, for a component, or whatever, uh, in terms of volts per square root hertz, or microvolts per square root hertz, or, you know, whatever, nanovolts per square root hertz at a given temperature, at a given T. And this stems from the same thermal noise expression, Vn equals 4kT r delta F where if you break this up, you have 4KTR times delta F. Uh, and this is the same thing as saying volts RMS per square root hertz times square root hertz. This is square root hertz. So what you get in your spec, something like this, is this guy. So then you need to go and construct a circuit where you choose, or you determine, or you calculate the bandwidth, which is this part. And then you take your bandwidth, you take the square root of it, and you multiply it by this expression, by this expression. Let's just do a quick example. Let's scroll down here. Say you had a spec for a component that's 100 nanovolts per square root hertz, and you want to construct a circuit based on this, and you know that it has to feed a system, or has to drive a system that has a 4 hertz bandwidth. 
then what you would do to find your noise is just take 100 nanovolts per square root hertz times the square root of 4 hertz, which is 200 nanovolts RMS. And I'll go on to the next video.